The decisive move was made in the last days of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, when the next in line for king of Saudi Arabia was in the holy city of Mecca. It will be Eid in a few days. I am waiting for the celebrations. June 2017, late at night. Your Excellency, His Excellency the King, Salman Abdullah, requests your presence in his palace right away. Crown Prince Mohammed Naif was taken aback. It is a strange request at this late hour. What could be the problem? Sure, let's go. Instead, waiting for him was MBS or Mohammed bin Salman, son of King Salman and Deputy Crown Prince. You must renounce your position of next in line in my favor. Officials loyal to MBS took away his phone and pressurized him. You cannot leave this room until you agree. By dawn, the diabetic naive was a broken man. Okay, I agree. You can now return to your palace in Jeddah, but are forbidden from leaving it. A hastily shot video was then released on TV the next morning. Breaking news, Mohammed Nayib abdicates throne in favor of Mohammed bin Salman. Knowing that Trump hated Obama's Iran nuclear deal, they had reached a tacit, unspoken understanding when Trump visited Saudi Arabia in May 2017. I'll take on Iran for you in the Middle East, but the US should back me in taking control of power in the kingdom. It's a deal. In early June, MBS had got together and threatened Qatar for their closeness to Shia Iran, Wahhabi, Saudi's biggest religious and most powerful opponent. Led by Saudi, the Arabs presented Qatar with a list of demands. One, stop broadcasting Al Jazeera channel. They were taking an uncomfortable view of MBS. Two, stop supporting terrorism. Three, stop supporting Iran. Qatar and Iran share a massive offshore natural gas field. Four, stop supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, Egypt's main opposition. Five, close the Turkish military base in Qatar, though there was no demand to close the U.S. air base in Udayed, Qatar, and placed an embargo on the tiny country, blocking all land, sea, and air routes threatening to remove Qatar from the GCC and impose financial sanctions. Qatar, the world's largest producer of liquefied natural gas, and with $340 billion in reserves, stood up to the bullies. We will, we will not, be not be dictated to. to. With food running out due to the embargo, they were forced to airlift 4,000 cows from Australia and the USA. Many in the Saudi royal family were not happy with MBS's moves, especially the action against Arab Qatar. He will go down and drag all of us along with him. Let's get together and replace him. On being tipped off about the coup attempt, in a ruthless move, he arrested 11 princes and 38 ministers and prominent businessmen and holed them up in the Ritz-Carlton. Arrested included Saudi's richest man and 57th on the Forbes list, worth $18 billion, Al-Walid Talal, who owns big chunks in telling the public that the arrests were part of an anti-corruption drive, gaining sympathy. MBS is a good man. He has arrested even his relatives for corruption. Forced into a situation he had not anticipated, he now had to appease both the US and the Saudi people to support him. He played another card. Mr. President, you have something to say. In November, Lebanon's PM, Saad Hariri, was in Saudi and he dropped a bombshell. Yes, uh, I fear assassination. I resign as a Lebanon uh, Prime Minister. When Hariri disappeared for days thereafter, Lebanon's president, Michael Aoun, retorted, Why are you holding him against his will? Why did he resign in Saudi? Why not here in Lebanon? Knowing that MBS had forced Hariri's resignation, his main opposition in Lebanon, Hezbollah's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, didn't fall for the trap. Instead, Hariri, we are waiting for you to come back to Lebanon. After decades of civil war since 1986, Lebanon had finally reached a truce to share power among the three main factions, Sunnis led by Hariri, Shia led by Nasrallah, and Maronite Christians led by Aoun. 
MBS engineered Hariri's resignation in the hope that civil war would break out once again in Lebanon and that Hezbollah, Iran's proxy there, would weaken. All the while, Hariri was detained in Saudi. MBS desperately tried to get the Israelis to attack Lebanon, asking all Saudi nationals to leave. But Israel decided otherwise. We don't need to get into another war with Hezbollah. When Hariri finally returned to Lebanon after three weeks, Saudi game was up. I am putting my resignation on hold. Meanwhile, MBS, who in late 2015 started bombing Yemen's capital, Sana'a, when Shia Houthi rebels overthrew a Saudi-sponsored government, now... We are closing the border between Saudi and Yemen, even for humanitarian assistance. With over 10,000 killed and 3 million displaced, Sana'a is now plagued by food shortages, where the price per liter of petrol has gone from, according to Human Rights Watch. Closing of the borders is a war crime. With both the Qatar and Lebanon plays being flops, MBS had to placate his countrymen, rather his country women. Women will now be allowed to drive, yay! With almost 70% of Saudi's total population of 22 million being below 30 years of age, MBS needed the youth on his side. Saudi will follow open, moderate religious practices. Even the U.S. was pleased with this. Saudi organizes mixed-gender music concert, cinema to open in Saudi. A new axis is forming in the Middle East. Earlier it was Saudi plus the Arabs versus Israel and Iran plus Syria versus Israel. Iran is not considered Arab, they are considered Persian. Now, Saudi plus Israel plus U.S. versus Iran plus the Arabs plus Turkey plus Russia. But the story wasn't over yet. In a further purge in November, MBS neutralized all the remaining challengers to the throne. A new crisis is brewing in the Middle East that threatens to turn allies into enemies and old foes into friends. Keep watching the unfolding story. Bisbo's Limerick Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Always worried forever with a frown. When the knives are out, there's always a doubt whether he's loyal or he will put you down. If you like this video, share it with your friends and become Bisbo's friend by subscribing for free to Bisbo's YouTube channel.